All right, welcome back to another standard video deck design. Um, these are going to be really rare videos because I don't play standard too often. This is my current standard deck. Um, this is going to be a very short-lived deck because I am using core set cards from both sets. Uh, that's actually the only reason I'm building the deck as it is. or well, the deck's already built. That's the only reason I'm running it. Um, I don't really just enjoy standard too much anymore. Like I used to play pretty heavily back uh, maybe five or more years ago. Uh, more recently, although, for example, when Theros first came out, I really fell in love with the uh, the heroic mechanics. So I made a rock dose heroic deck with uh, the Deviant Glees and the Madcap skills going on the uh, Sleeper Agent, not Sleeper Agent, <laughs> wow, um, the uh, the Agent of Fates. Before then, I had a, a rock dose control deck between Ravnica and Avison, where I was board wiping left and right and using the key runes and like a pair of homicidal seclusions for a win condition. Um, before then, we're going back to like new Phyrexian things. So every now and then, I'll, I'll out of nowhere choose to make a standard deck. Um, here's one of them. Uh, why I chose to make this is because there's two really good, powerful combinations. Uh, I really liked the Generator Servant, uh, the two for a two one that I can pay, tap him and sack him to get two mana. Um, and if it's for a creature spell, that creature has haste. What that means is I can cast him on turn two and a dragon on turn three. Um, this is a blue-red deck. It's a dragon deck. <laughs> the other reason I chose to do dragons is because they reprinted Crucible of Fire, which is a very fantastic card. So a turn three Storm Breath could be a possibility here. Uh, and that's always fun and hard to deal with. Um, a turn three Scourge of Valkus. I, this is a mistake. If you look, two of these are foil, one is not. I, when I play standard, I actually do play competitively, although this is obviously not a, a, a tier deck. Um, it's very stupid to run foils and non-foils of the same card in the deck. You'll see how... Yeah, it's really dumb here, too. I only have this one hypersonic, and then, like, these guys are foil. Um, in a, a format right now where things like Thought Seize and Duress are legal, uh, you're very likely to forget what your opponent saw, and then you will play the... You'll draw a non-foil and play the non-foil, and they'll remember that's knowledge to them. So this is a mistake. I shouldn't be doing that, but... Eh. Uh, the last dragon is, I, I put one Nivy in here. I had two originally, but the speed of the deck. A turn four Nivy is really cool. Um, in today's standard society, it's really actually hard to, to maintain this. Like, I will oftentimes get two for one because I'm sacking a creature to accelerate out one earlier. Uh, but the hasty turn three beater is fantastic, especially when on um, turn four I can drop a Crucible of Fire, essentially making it a 7-7 seven, seven beater. Um, so yeah, there's one Nivy in here. I do have a lot of removal in the deck, being blue and red. I don't have a lot. I was thinking about things like Turn and Burn and Is It Charm, but currently I'm running a playset of Jet's main board. Uh, three Lightning Strikes, and a pair, or three Mortars, and two Anger of the Gods. Uh, my sideboard has a lot more removal. Essentially a playset of all the Burn, except for I only have three of the, uh, the Lightning Strikes in there. I was in the sideboard, but I'll get to that. Um, the other big card in the deck is the Crucible of Fire, um, because currently, uh, where's that? Uh, currently, Mutavolt is standard legal. Essentially, that means I can swing with a five-five or more Mutavolt. Um, a lot of people don't recognize that, like until the first time I activate and chump block whatever they thought they're going to get damage through with. Um, but very shortly after, they will make the recognition and they'll try to destroy my lands more then. Um, but yeah, the, the Crucible of Fire makes my 4-4 Dragons a 7-7. You'd think some of the harder matchups for this deck would be like Mono Black. Uh, the good thing is Mono Black tends to use a bit of their life as a resource before they can actually land a uh, the Grey Merchant. So if I can land the Crucible, Mono Black usually has no way of dealing with the Crucible. Like not, not in my play group unless they're splashing green or so. Um, or even down in my shop, I don't think I've run into a mono black deck that can deal with a crucible. So that immediately puts my dragons outside of a desecration demon's range. And if we're going on turn order and I get lucky enough to drop a dragon on three and a crucible on four, that's the same turn the demon's going to be out. So all of a sudden I have a bigger creature than the demon. Um, so the crucibles are actually very fantastic. I'm running a play set of them in there. I don't have a lot of draw. I kind of want to put divination and is it charm in here, but for right now I'm running four Chandra's. Um, running four may be a mistake. I might cut to three simply because I hate top decking Chandra after Chandra. Um, but then we're down to the lands. We have a play set of the Mutavolts, and then the Pains, and the Temples, and the Shocks, and the rest of them are just this giant pile of uh, portal lands I've been holding on to for a while. Um, but that is the current main deck. Uh, I am running a sideboard. I'm a, a standard 15, not like one of my goofy casual decks. 
Um, I'm running a pair of dispels. Uh, pretty good against any kind of um, a control or just about anything because the, their best removal is going to be at the end of my turn if possible. Um, or stopping someone from Sphinx, Sphinx's revving or just about anything there. Mizium skin is usually splashed in there for any kind of removal package like uh, when I'm going up against black. Uh, we have better removal. Mortars is usually, it may not stay in here much longer. Anger of the Gods is usually more splashed in for the sideboard simply because in my shop right now, uh, Green Rampy, uh, Devotion, and Polychronos decks are just everywhere. It does also deal with Master of the Wave tokens, although the Master of the Wave is going to be immune to it. Sadly, Master of the Wave is immune to everything in my deck except the, uh, the uh, Mutavolt. Uh, Skullcrack is in there, of course, it stops Sphinx's Rev. And I do run two staffs. Uh, there's not a lot of burn decks on my place, so the staffs are kind of helpful. And two pithing needles to stop walkers or um, the dr drawing of the uh, underworld connections or just about anything there. Um, but that's the sideboard. The deck is actually really funny to play. There's a lot of interesting interactions right now. Um, for example, the Scourge, this is one of my favorite dragons. It's just funny. It's Usually he may enter and just burn something for one. So that could get rid of whatever that blue-white owl is. Um, but the funny thing is, I mean, he also incrementally gets worse and worse the more dragons on the board. And normally in standard, it doesn't take but one or two dragons just to win. But, for example, I can, in response to him coming through and not getting countered with his ability on the stack, I can activate a Mutavolt and get an extra damage out of there because he's a dragon. So that one ping all of a sudden becomes a shock or something like that. Um, but the, the Generator Servant is kind of the key of the deck. Um, against a lot of green decks, it's just not fast enough unless I see him. Uh, luckily, green doesn't have the removal to usually kill it. Um, but at the same time, by the time I may turn three a dragon, a proper green devotion deck or Nykthos deck is going to drop something I, I that's already out of range. I don't have a lot of good removal in here for something that big. So that's the hardest matchup would probably be like green devotion right now. Um, against control decks, this is funny because I, I do have ways of them stopping gaining life, but even main deck, a lot of my stuff has haste. Um, and that, that itself can be a pretty big game changer. If, for example, they try to um, they ignore like the, uh, the hypersonic dragon, I can on their turn actually make use of his ability in like um, anger of the gods um, and, and get rid of like a token army or something like that. Um, the sad thing is, again, this, is, this deck is only functional right now because Mutavolt is standard legal. And it's about to rotate out in a couple weeks here, or months. Well, somewhere, it's, it's rotating out pretty quickly. As soon as this does rotate out, I will probably disband the deck. I may, I've, I've already traded for the blue red land, so I might keep something functional, but um, losing such powerful tech, like I'm losing some removal and scourge. Um, I'm losing hypersonic, so I'm losing another one of the five mana costing dragons. I could replace them with like the, uh, uh, the Hoarding Dragon, so I can go tutor up an artifact, but right now there's not a lot of good artifacts that help the deck. Um, like the Hammer Perforos doesn't really matter since I have haste. I, I don't really want to main deck run things like the Staff effects, because that's not really what the deck needs. Um, but luckily, I mean, th there is a new uh, Wedge Cycle block coming up, and there's, of course, Sark and the Mad, or Sark and Vol in the artwork, so hopefully there's going to be a whole bunch of new dragons. Like, my dream would be to get the uh, the Furnace Whelp, or whatever that two mana costing one is, the one in a red for a 0-1 fire, fire Breathing Flyer. Because if that thing is standard legal, while the Crucible of Fire is standard legal, um, that's just going to be funny as hell. Um, but this is actually it's such a funny and goofy deck. It's it's not going to be a tier deck. I don't. I, I doubt it. Like I, I keep playing against everyone. It has really good matchups. It has really bad matchups. Um, so it's just like any other deck. But... The obscureness is is the funny part there. Um, again, as I, I will always highlight, if you are playing standard, don't be stupid like I'm doing here and playing foils and non-foils, especially when things like Thoughtseize are standard legal. Um, just get a place set of nons and you'll be fine. Um, you might think like, oh, I will always remember what I showed them. And don't do the thing like where you like reveal your cards for them to remember. That's just giving them more information and helping your opponent win. Um, I try not to play standard too much. I know right now I could make a pretty evil just about anything deck like I could make a really cool Azorius Control or American uh, just about it like it's so easy to make standard decks like it's not just looking at people's lists it's just looking at the cards and you can see what is broken what is unbalanced and what is fun so I made something fun um, but yeah I mean hopefully I, I may I don't know I'm just 
I'm also kind of annoyed. I really don't like these new borders. Like, I used to, I like the older borders, like from Prophecy and whatnot, where the a red card just stood out as red. And some of the text, like, was white and everything like that. Um, they weren't all like that, but these new borders are just, uh, I, I'm on between about them. But anyways, yeah, I do keep posted here. I'm probably going to be posting a lot more EDH and casual decks than standard. Um, I, I may even post a couple modern things, so this channel may be rewritten. Not this channel, this playlist of videos may be rewritten a little bit here. Um, but yeah, if you have any ideas or if there's actually a pretty funny combo that's working right now for this, definitely let me know. Uh, thanks.